For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. But men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Wisdom crieth without. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she utters her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I pour out my spirit upon unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded it. But ye have sat at my not at my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction as a whirlwind, when distress and anger cometh upon you, then shall you call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge, and did not choose to fear the Lord. They would none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkens unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Now those words from Proverbs chapter 1, laughing at you, mocking you. That is God the Father speaking out as you reject the word of God being preached. When you will not adhere to God, today may be the day that you will close the door on God forever. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The gospel is proclaimed that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You cannot get to heaven outside Jesus Christ. And when you hear week after week after week the message of the gospel being preached, we're not teaching prosperity, we're not teaching Easter bunnies, we are preaching the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ on what God expects you to do to go to heaven. And there is nothing that you can do but to trust and believe and put your faith on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, which died for our sins. Your religion will damn you as anything else that's not Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death. 
And yet Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, would take away the sin of the world. And God has sent wisdom to City Island Road. The wisdom is that Jesus saves, and Jesus alone saves. The words that Jesus Christ has proclaimed that the only way to get to the Father is by Him. And I don't care if you go to church tomorrow and your religious leader said something else to what is being preached. And if your preacher is preaching something else other than the Bible, that guy, that woman is wrong according to the Word of God. And if you think you can get to heaven by anything else but what has been preached, you are wrong by the Word of God. You stand here at the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market, according to Proverbs chapter 1, you stand here as a fool, as a scorner, or as a simpleton. Now, if you are a simpleton, that's not bad, because there is a chance for you to be saved. Because you are listening. And you may be at the point of being agnostic. You don't know. If you hear these words and honestly say to yourself, I don't know. I'm not sure. I am surrounded by scorners that mock you. I am surrounded by fools that say there is no God, don't listen to Him. And yet, if you can at least say, I don't know, you're not saying there's no God. And you're saying, well, I don't know if there's a God. And you're not mocking the message. Step out quietly. We've got plenty of gospel tracts that you can take without anybody seeing you. And you can read for yourself and get yourself a Bible and study out. And you can know God. And we won't make a big deal. We won't turn the headlights on. We won't call out all the bells and whistles. If you come out and say, hey, I don't know. Can I have one of those pieces of paper and I can find out if there's a God? Be ashamed of not knowing. Because we want you to know. First John says, These things are written that you may know you have eternal life. Don't become a scorner. A scorner will never get saved. He'll just keep on mocking God. And one day he'll be face to face with God, eye to eye, as he will have to explain his mockery. As God will declare to him, go jump in the lake of fire. He say, well, preacher, that's not a loving message. That was last week. The Lord lays on my heart certain messages or a certain preaching every week. We've been here for years and weeks. And we know that some of you here, you vendors, are fools. Because you sell something that God has provided you, and yet you will not acknowledge God. You're a fool. You're a fool if you don't acknowledge God according to the Bible. You don't thank God for what God has blessed you. And you're not guaranteed for God to continue to give you His fruit in His season if this country keeps rejecting God. There's a time call coming pretty soon called the Great Tribulation. There will be no water for forget your crops. You'll be
be too busy running from the plagues and the vials and the trumps to worry about food and vegetables. And there's some of you here. You're as equal as a fool as somebody who doesn't believe in God. You are, in the reaction of the Word of God being preached, you are mocking. You think that I'm a fool. You don't think the Bible's right. You wish I was shut up. There's a mockery fool right there. And yet the Bible says, mister, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. Now, I am not responsible for what you do with it. But your classification of the date thrown at Beach Farmer's Market here on City Island Road on March 11, 2017, you stand in three classes. You stand as a fool. You stand as a mocker, or maybe you're just simple, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but you're unsure. And I ask you to step out, to get one of these gospel tracts, Bill, read on your own. You don't have to read it here. Grab one of these tracks, put them in your pocket, put it in your purse, take it home, sit in your car, there's a beautiful park over here with benches you, you can sit, but for those here that don't know, or do know and think, uh, I can tomorrow. That you might know today that Jesus saves. I've got to ask you, if you were to die now, if you were to die today, next week, next month, when your death date comes, what then? What if there is a God that you don't believe in? What if there is a God that you are unsure of? What if is a very dicey situation if you're going to die? You would not enter a career move in your life based upon what if. You would say, well, how much would I make? How many hours would I work? What would be the priorities of my job? And yet, in the life of the realm of eternal life, what if? And from the Bible that is recorded here, God to you. Let me read to you Isaiah chapter 1. I'll, I'll turn to the pages. Isaiah chapter 1, bear with me, it's a little windy here. You're not sure, or you grew up under Bible message and you have been turned away. You want to talk? I'll turn off the sound system. I will open the Bible with you. There are two people here with me that can speak to you. Today you can know God saves you by the belief on His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You might know with your heart the saving grace. You might be able to confess as much as I am doing today that I am saved. But if you're not sure, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. God speaking. Come now. Don't wait. Will 
you come to God now? God is offering you an invitation to come now. Come before it's too late and you don't know when it's too late. When God of all the heavens and earth, on a time frame that He has no time frame, time is of little matter to God. And yet He says to you, human, come now. It's got to be important. It's got to be something you have to deal with right now if God says, come now. Let us, that is you and God, the God that you're unsure about, or the God that you do believe in, says, come now, let us, you and God together through the Word of God. Not what man thinks, not a missile, not anything but the words of God. The King James 1611 Bible. When I'm talking about your soul and your salvation, it's not what you think, it's not what I think. It's what God says. And God says, come now, let us. Reason together, saith the Lord. Now that does not mean that you come over here and you give me your ideas and God's going to say, Oh, that's just so good. How come I didn't think of that? God in heaven is not going to give your ideas and your thoughts the time of day. But he says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. He will take what you think, what you want to know, and what you need to know by the Word of God, that you might obtain eternal life through Jesus Christ. Now, you may come to me with religion, with church, with border, with whatever you think can save. And I will hand you my Bible, and I will say, turn to the chapter and the verse of the book that states what you believe. At least three times. One for God, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. If you can show me what you believe, three places in the Bible that do not contradict each other, I will declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ through four gospels, through many uh, the epistles that have been written to us in the book of the Bible, that Jesus alone saves. And we will reason to you, Isaiah chapter 118, what God says you need to do to gain into His holy presence. Don't step over here and say, well, I'm going to debate my religion. I'm going to give you 14 points of this. I'm going to give you a... I don't want that junk. You can take that junk into hell. Because that's where that junk is going to take you. Your religion, your own belief outside the Bible will take you to a place called hell. Now, if you want to get out of hell, you come to God. You meet with God right now, this time, this place, and you can meet God and know that you have eternal life by the things that are written. Someone here has got to say, I'm not sure, I don't know. Someone's probably here saying, you know what, I've been passing God all my years. I better stop ducking God. And we'll be to that person, if that's the case, either case, you walk out on God this today. Though your sins be as scarlet, there is 
the sin issue all over again. Your problem is not democratics. Your problem is not religion. Your problem is not politics. Your problem is you are a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, if you don't think you're a sinner, let me talk to your spouse for a little while. Let me talk to your parents. Come now, let's meet with your spouse to see if you're a sinner. And yet you have to, you must deal with your sin. And you can't do it yourself. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There's only one way to remove and wash your sins. That is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And some of you who have to listen to us week after week after week after week, you say, that is the same message. You're always preaching Jesus. You're always preaching the blood. You're always preaching about hell. You're always preaching from the Bible. You're not going to get nothing else from me but God, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Bible, and the Gospel that He died for your sins, and He was buried, and He arose again. Anything else is damnation and condemnation. Some of you are not going to realize till it's too late the importance of this message being brought to you today. This message is not religious, it's not political. It's eternal. I'm like one of them big air raid signs. Danger is coming. This is not a test. And when you die, and you are in eternal, whether heaven or hell, when you are in heaven by Jesus Christ, you're going to say, thank you for that message. You're going to praise God for God sending people with His gospel. And if you have done nothing to, fur nothing to further the gospel, you're going to wish you had. Or you can go off into eternal, into the hell, and wanting mercy and grace which you'll never get. A scorner is somebody that says, hey, I don't want to hear it. Get out of here. Shut up. We can't do much with you. A fool has said in his heart, there's no God. And yet Romans says, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So there's pretty much nothing we can do with you. Unless you're trying to be a big shot in front of everybody else. Unless Proverbs chapter 1, you're going with the crowd, which leads to death. Again, Proverbs chapter 1. There's a young man acting like an idiot because his friends want him to act like an idiot, and he runs into death in hell. And in the same chapter of Proverbs chapter 1, there's a scorner, and there is a fool that run off into hell by rejecting what God has told him. And God has set forth wisdom, and the wisdom is set forth in His Son, Jesus Christ. There is no but that which is Jesus Christ. A mocker will use the name of Jesus Christ as a cuss. And a simple
simpleton will say, Jesus Christ, what about him? The Bible says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Assurity. Good morning. How you doing? So is Trump a Christian? Surety. The Bible speaks of a surety. You can have assurance today. Or you can get an assurance when you die. You can know in hell that there's a hell, but it's too late to know there's a hell. Adam and Eve learned too late about good and evil. By the time Adam and Eve knew about evil, it was too late. And they could not go back and throw up that fruit and say, Oh Lord, we threw it up, and so we're not going to be charged. And what was the knowledge of the evil in their life? Very next thing was in their family was a murder, death. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If you are a scorner here today, you are whosoever, you can be saved. You can be saved before you go too far. Even if you're a fool, even if you deny the very presence of God, you still can be saved. You are in the earshot of this message. But Proverbs chapter 1 warns you, you can go too far. You are not messing with a human father. You are messing with the holy of holy gods, of all gods, Lord Jehovah, the creator of heaven and earth and life. And if you anger God to the point of wrath, there will be no help for you. For John the Baptist said, he that hath the Son hath everlasting life. He that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Once you get that wrath of God, you will not ever, ever get released. Because that wrath of God is hell. And you've got to preach hell because if you don't believe in God, you don't believe on Jesus Christ, it will be hell. And this earth and your life is not hell because you can get a glass of water. You can go into an air conditioning room or car. There is no water, there is no air conditioning in hell. And the only happiness you will get in hell is being an atheist that you'll be away from God. But there is no happiness in hell. Hell is so bad. Hell is so uninviting that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why did he give Jesus? What is the whole purpose of Jesus for your life today that you might not go to hell? And if you can do it your own way, why have Jesus? There has to be a reason for Jesus. You can 
not date your calendar without Jesus. We are in A.D. after Jesus. After the birth of Jesus Christ, you point 2017. So if you are an atheist, you are a hypocrite when you write 2017. Because you are writing 2017 in the year of my Lord, Savior, God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And you don't even believe in him, but you date his birthday. You hypocrite. Make up your own year and see how everybody would like it. Our calendars tell us that there's a Jesus Christ. Our system of years is based upon Jesus Christ. Your acceptance into heaven by God is by Jesus Christ. Your rejection of God and into hell is because you have rejected Jesus Christ. There's one mediator between God and man. And that is the man, Christ Jesus, the Son of God who is God. And the God of the Bible has written to you, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. God is willing, God is long-suffering that He is not willing that you perish. Perish means God's going to throw you out in an incinerator. That incinerator is hell. And the object of science and matter is you can never dissolve matter totally. That's in a simple English form. There is no matter you can't get rid of, ever. And your soul is a matter that will live for eternity, even if you are in a lake of fire. The incinerator of God. A man is in hell today and will go to hell because he rejects the salvation gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. No money, no checks, no credit cards, no, nothing, none of works. For we are saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ without spot. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There is no other means. It's the blood of Jesus or it's hell. And that blood is not to be taken orally. Drinking blood makes you a cannibal doesn't make you saved. And if you drink the blood of God, you don't realize before the law, during the law, and after the law, God says it's an abomination to drink blood. And yet somebody's made it a religion. The blood of Jesus Christ is to be received by faith. Jesus Christ is God approved for salvation for your soul. It doesn't involve money, it doesn't involve works, it doesn't involve water, it doesn't involve membership. And you don't bring God a receipt. You come to God by the righteousness of His Son, Jesus Christ. And by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, God will give you fruit that is much better in taste than the fruit that is here. The fruit of God is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience.
The fruit here, here you have to buy. You have to peel it. You eat it. Then with 24 hours it exit. And yet the fruit of God lasts forever. And the fruit of God is free. Now they might give you one free strawberry, they might give you a free apple or something, but God's fruit is forever, it's free, it's been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ upon Calvary. premium of the blood of Jesus Christ. The premium of death has been met to God by His Son. You just got to step up and receive it by faith. What happens if you finally chase that, that, that guy away? <laughs> yeah. with, his, with his bongo music or whatever the hell he was doing? Yep. He finally had enough. He couldn't compete. Oh. Or they stopped paying him to be here. The competition was too tough for him. The word of God's abound, not bounded. The devil's on the run. Yes. See that? My, my faith is restored now. I see that guy's not here. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, have a good one. Man. You too now, sir. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Can you say that? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Tracy. I'm Joanne. I'm the lawyer. Yeah. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Joanne. Okay. You know, when it comes to death, I don't want to burn. I don't want to suffer. Who does? Who will voluntarily say, yeah, let me stick my fingers in that, in that electrical outlet? No. But death itself, the very fact that when you pass on, yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Religion can't give you peace. Your priest cannot give you peace. I grew up as a Roman Catholic. And the Bible says in 1 John, these things are written that you may know you have eternal life. Alcohol does not last that long. Death will. Marijuana can't, can't solve your problem for all eternity. Yeah, but God can. In the eternal life, after death, by Jesus Christ, there is no pain. There is no death. There is no suffering. There is no tears. Without Jesus Christ, the Bible says, tormented, torments, and being tormented for all eternity. With no relief, because beer is an alcoholic drink that evaporates with flame, so you can forget about having beer in hell. And your friends will be too angry and too disgusted to be one to party with you in hell. Which, by the way, the party in hell has been canceled due to the fire. Even a firewalker walks across quickly. He doesn't, oh, I'll just stay here in the cold five minutes. No. And yet you can have the surety and you can have the peace even in death by Jesus Christ. Who is God. And Acts 20.28 20, says it's God's blood that was payment for the church.
you don't know what the love of God is. People have said you'll preach more love. You don't know what the love of God is that He has sent us here to preach to you. And yet, if I don't preach the gospel, I will stand guilty at the great white throne judgment. But since I do preach the gospel, the word of God, and you will not listen, you will stand guilty at the great white throne judgment. You will stand guilty and condemned. And whatever God you believe that's not the God of the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ will be cast into hell with you. In the Bible, Aaron made a golden calf and they had a Baptist fellowship meeting to afterwards. And Moses destroyed that God into powder. He pulverized that God. And the God of the Bible, Jehovah, still got the children of Israel into the promised land. And by the Jews worshiping other gods, made of wood, stone, and man's hands, they are under the wrath of God today. And if that same Jew of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were to believe on Jesus Christ as their Savior and Messiah, the love of God will return back to that person by Jesus and not by your ancestry. Attention all Jewish people, you need to be saved by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. God is not interested in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob right now. Salvation has been wrought by Jesus. We'll get back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jacob's trouble. But right now, Jesus saves and Jesus alone. This message has been proved by God and written down by blood. For God so loved the world, that's love, the world, that's you, that He gave, that's charity. In John 3, 16, you have to love. You got the love of God and you got saved. Now, giving is not always love. I just, Lord, just popped in my little brain. I can say I love my mother and give her a hard time. I can say I love my wife and give my time to work. But that's not... That is not love. The love of God that He gave His Son. The love of God that He gave. Allah says steal and take. Allah says shed blood. The big elephant God in India says, throw your babies under my wheels. The Pope says, give me your little children so my priest can have fun. And yet God says, I love you enough, I have given you my son. I have
have met the ransom that needs to be atoned for your soul, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That is the love message of God. If I got up today and started preaching like they preach on Sundays, you wouldn't even believe me. You'd start giggling. Oh, the pastor, everything's just so well. Everyone open your Bible. I can't even do it. I don't have pearly white teeth. And that's a lie. That guy may look great, he may smile great, but if he does not preach hell, damnation, the salvation of Jesus Christ, he is a liar from hell. And if your religious minister says that what your church believes is a lie, because God doesn't care what you believe. God cares on what you do with Jesus Christ before you die. You see, the Bible says when we get to glory, it's all going to be worshiping Jesus, not us. Be praise and honor to the one that died for us, not us. No one in heaven is going to say and give me, hey, it's great preaching, love that preaching they told me, oh, you did so good. No, they're not going to. We're all going to be around the throne and singing and praising Jesus Christ. I'll tell you another thing that you haven't noticed with preachers and television and radio. With a man that's preaching the gospel, you don't even know who my name is. And I don't care you to know my name. The name I want you to hear is proclaim is Jesus Christ. That's the name. Acts 4.12, there is no other name given much name whereby you must be saved. The only name that is important to God is Jesus Christ. Not even Jehovah is important. Come to me, listen, I've been in the prison Je Jehovah, Jehovah. No. The name according to Acts 4.12 is Jesus. They shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. And Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father today. I said Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father today. He's not nailed to a cross on your chest. He's not nailed to a cross behind your altar. That is blasphemy to have Jesus Christ still nailed when Hebrews says He has risen to the Father. Jesus Christ is alive and well. How's your God doing? Mary Baker Eddy has not made no phone calls. There has not been a pope come out of that grave. Mary said, Whatsoever my son saith, do it. And Jesus said, believe on him. He's the eternal life. He's the one. When Jesus died on that cross, his words were, it is finished. I'm going to add more to it. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that son said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I can't imagine saying,
all of you scorners today, and you fools, week after week after week, you how many times have you heard me say that Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and you're going to march your butt up to God and say, uh-oh, he was right. No, I wasn't right. The Bible's right. Because when I say to you, I am quoting from the Bible. The words that I say are the words of Jesus. So even when you stand before God to be condemned, you say, oh, that guy was right. No, 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 no. That guy wasn't right. The word of God was right. And you know that you have a preacher among you because it's the word of God that you hear every week. And the Word shall judge you by what is preached. You don't realize that you have a prophet among you. And yet we stand in the times as Noah. Everybody knows that Noah built the ark, correct? Did you know Noah was a preacher? And do you know after how many years he built that ark and he preached to the people? No one got in that boat. A jackass got in that boat more obedient than you do. God told the animals two by two get in that boat. They did it. Noah preached to the people and they, no, nothing will happen. You're a liar. Noah, shut up. You fool. God won't judge us. And those people who are in hell today say, oh, if I only got in that boat, if I only listened to that preacher, if I only followed those animals, and yet there's a greater one than, than Noah. That can seal our salvation. It's Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ sets and shuts that door in heaven, no one else is going to go in. And the Bible proclaims, and you know how you get into heaven? Not only by Jesus Christ, but by the preaching of Jesus Christ. You've got to hear the word in your heart and in your ears to believe. So God said, hey, I love them people so much, for I so love the world, they go to beach, that I have given my only begotten son. I love you guys so much, I'm going to tell that loud mouth, go in all the world and preach the gospel. So, when you hear this loud mouth that you want to mock and be a fool, You can thank God. Thank you, God, that that guy destructs our business for God. Thank you, Lord God, that that guy is irritating for Jesus. That guy is driving away business for the Word of God. Thank you, God. Oh, we want more love of God. You got it. What would Jesus do? You realize he preached to 4,000 people and everybody heard him? I wish I had his voice. I wish I could preach to 4,000 people without this electronic device. Paul sat on Mars Hill and preached to all the people. Amplification gets me so everybody can hear. If everybody could hear me without this amplification, I'd turn it off and use my voice, but... But I want the gospel. I want Jesus Christ. I want you to know that He is the way. He is the salvation. He is the one that God has sent forth to save your soul. And I want you all to hear that. And you need to realize that is the love of God. How you doing? 
And this message is much better than hearing a bunch of men making left-hand turns. This is much better than a, than a ball going out in the outfield. This is much better going to a goal post. And you never yell at the, the announcer at those events, but when you hear God preach with loudness, you don't want to hear it, you get upset. And you don't even realize the Bible proclaims that you will get upset, and Jesus has told us they're not going to receive the word. Thank you. Spread. Appreciate it. Have a good day. You might not like being loud. Let me read to you out of Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I said, it's a little windy here. Bear with me. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. How shall they preach except they be sent? I've been sent to preach. You might not like it. But let's see what God has to say. God, what do you feel about that loud mouth down here? Alright. Romans 10, 15. As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. What's he saying about you? Romans 10, 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. You see, when I read from Proverbs chapter 1 about the scorner and about the fools, God has already told me what you would do with the gospel. God said there's a broad way, but that's not good in the Bible. The broad way leads to destruction. And many go therein. And yet there's also a straight way. And that straight way is Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, few that go that way. There are few people that come up here, thank you, brother, for doing it. Thank you for preaching the word. And there are many of you that say, shut up. And yet you prove the Bible to me to end my family to be true. You realize the whole nation of Israel cried out when Jesus was on trial. The entire nation cried out, crucify him. And the few that followed Jesus, one betrayed him. Ten of them took off. Nine of them took off. One was warming himself with the world and the worldly fire. John, the beloved disciple, was the only one that we could see that got the closest. So even Jesus Christ himself, he had the mass of people against him. Tell him. Get rid of him. We're tired of hearing him. We're tired of him coming to where, oh, you can heal me, Jesus, but we don't want to hear, hear you. And you need to come to the order that God is not a bubblegum machine. You don't put your prayer quarter in and you get the red bubblegum you want. You got to realize you get what God wants you. And God wants you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 You believe whatever you want at the great white throne judgment. If it's not Jesus and the books are open, your name's not in there, jump off into the lake of fire that burneth forever. If you are simple and you don't know you're clueless. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with questioning, is there a God? 
There's nothing to say, God, what do you want me to do? I don't know. Come now. Let us. Reason together, the Bible says in Psalm from Isaiah 118. God says you got questions, you really want to know, come. I'm writing you, come. God wants you to come. God wants you to come to Him and walk away saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life if you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil if you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. God has set the standard. And the standard's not you. The standard is Jesus Christ. The measure of perfection and righteousness is Jesus Christ. The means of salvation is Jesus Christ. Again, Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. Capital L. No man cometh unto the Father. And I'm not talking about a Pope. I'm talking about God the Father. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is the words of Jesus Christ. Death and hell is coming without Jesus Christ. Death and glory are coming by Jesus Christ. See, to go to hell is your choice. God will not throw you into hell. You choose to go to hell by rejecting His offering, Jesus Christ. You can't blame God because you have heard what God expects from you. You have been told the way of salvation. And if you choose to reject it, you have chosen to go to hell. Not God. And I know you can hear. I know. And you are without excuse. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. I say, trust Jesus. But that's up to you. That's your choice. The choice is yours. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would He devote that sacred head for a sinner such as I? At the cross where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon that tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all I can do at the cross where I first saw the light.
and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Now I am happy all the day. Years I spent as vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. Sound familiar? Knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I spurred, till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now my rapture soul can only sing a Calvary. Mercy there was great, and grace is free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. You can only be pardoned if you're guilty. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Hey, I'm showing you mercy and grace by not singing. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusted in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Isaiah 1.18 Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you? There are hymns sung about Jesus. Hymn books are filled with the saving grace of Jesus Christ. It's got to be something that makes you want to sing. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16 verse 30, Acts 16 verse 31. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. These words have come out of the Bible. For by grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God.